What news do you want? Oh, is it bad? <laughs> what news do you want? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. We were having such a good time. I know we were. Okay, just tell me. We're going to take the head off the engine. Oh, it's there. It's there. Oh I've my got it. God. Ah. <laughs> that uh, is unbelievable. So what is that? That is so lucky. That sits on top of the valve. That's good news. That is really good news. Lucky? Yeah, oh yeah. It ain't gone in the engine. If I'd gone in the engine, we'd have to strip the sump out. Whoa. There was a bit of um, force going there, wasn't there? Ready? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, Stuart. Yeah, you're welcome, mate. You're she welcome. sounded the best she's ever sounded. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah the... Welcome to Vista Mar Marina in Palomar. We arrived last week as enough was enough with our engine issue. We now had an awful grinding noise and white smoke pouring out the exhaust and had pretty quickly realised it was an earlier mistake of taking the anti-siphon valve out in Shelter Bay a month ago that had probably caused it. We'd had the pity party, but now it was time to fix it. And you'll not believe who rung us up and said, I'm coming out to help you fix it. See you at the airport soon. I'm not kidding. When I say you were in for a wild ride this week, and if engine fixing isn't up your street, later in the vid, we head to the mountains. So grab a cuppa, click subscribe, and welcome aboard. It's Stuart. Our friend who helped us through the Panama Canal just the month earlier had packed his bags and hopped on the soonest flight with his wife Chris to come and help us out with fixing our engine. He brought all the spare parts too. What a legend. That's the uh, push rod. Oh, uh, okay. Wow, it's longer than I thought. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Right. Yeah. And that fits in your tapid at the bottom. It sits on the top of the cam. This is the rocker arm assembly. Yeah. So this is where the oil wells are, where the oil comes off and it feeds the rocker arm so it keeps it lubricated. Oh. That sits on the valve valve side. Yeah. And then that's where the push rod is located, like that. Ah, oh, interesting. On top of your engine. And where did this one come from? Uh, this is one that your dad got yeah. off the internet, which is a great buy for what it was. And then I went to a, uh, a Caterpillar forklift dealer that uses the exactly same engine to get them. Yeah, wicked. So we've team effort to locate this. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a good thing to have as a spare. Yeah, for sure. It's a very niche spare. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, who carries one of these around? Well, no, they just, they just yeah. had it. Your dad saw it, and uh, it was, it, for the money, it was yeah. worth just having it. Yeah, for sure. As a spare. Because these clips come off. Yeah. And obviously, these are spring loaded, so yeah. it keeps them in the section, and then you can take them all off and. Use them individually or yeah, together. Take them all off. That's awesome. Stuart arrived late last night and he's already working on the engine, but today they are taking the rail off, which is the fuel line, and it's solid, which is different than cars, because apparently on cars it's just like a rubber pipe. Yeah. Anyway, they're taking out the injectors, they're going to turn over the engine by hand and hope the water spurts out of the combustion chamber. <laughs> She's such a legend. His wife is here as well. She's just having some chill time. Her name's Chris. Um, a little bit camera shy, but I'll try and I'll try and get her on camera a bit later. Um, but no, such a nice couple, and we're so happy they're back out. Honestly, it's, everything's a blessing in disguise. Honestly, just again to see great friends again. Thanks to Click and Boat for sponsoring this video. With a diverse range of private yacht rentals and bare boat charters, from monoholes to catamarans, sloops to catches, and even one like Tailey, you are guaranteed to find the boat you're looking for. Plus, boats and services are followed by a dedicated account management team, so you can rest assured that you're getting the highest quality on offer. Head to the link in our description box to start your sailing adventure. So this is your spillback rail. Spillback rail. Our fuel line, isn't it? Oh, it, go, it filters through that. I thought there'd yeah. be a hole there. No, they're, they're, it's all around there. It's hollow. Oh, That's why you have to be careful with them. Yeah. Interesting. Plus, if you put too much pressure on, you can bend those. Yeah, it's, it's only aluminium. Yeah, these are proper injector spanners, these. Got that green so you, you, here. you get right access to it. Oh yeah, beautiful. How does it feel, Zach, to be holding off fuel injector? Scary. 
So, Stuart, do you have to only take one out to be able no, to... No, I'm going to take them all okay. out. We want to make sure that the engine spins freely. Yeah. Then what we'll do, we'll take the take all the rocker arm off, mm -hmm. and then all the valves will be closed then, mm -hmm. and then we can rotate the engine. Awesome. And then anything that will come out will come out of here. Yeah. Tell me what that bit of our boat is, Zach. Uh, this is... So this goes off the fuel pump here, and then each of these goes into the injectors, but it's, a, it's like a bit of modern art, isn't it? It is. Should we, should we frame it? Yeah, I think we should. It's mm -hmm. like a surgeon's table up here, all your tools. Yeah. All the parts. Organ by organ is coming out. Yeah, always lay it out like that. That's what I do with every job. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Obviously, that's where the oil goes up inside to feed the bar. Yeah. At this point, we realised the valve collet was missing. So I would have thought we'd drop this side of the engine. So. Oh, it's so... there. It's there. Oh I've my got it. God. <laughs> that uh is. Unbelievable. So what is that? That is so lucky. That sits on top of the valve. Do you think that would have come off first? No, 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 no. The rocket arm had come off and it had dropped in there. Wow. <laughs> That's good news. That is really good news. Lucky? Yeah, oh yeah. It ain't gone in the engine. If I'd gone in the engine, we'd have to strip the sump out. Can you see where the wear has been on the side here? Where it's been catching this, the uh, oh, yeah. head. Obviously when it was out of alignment. But it doesn't look like it's particularly damaged it, it but I mean, if you left it for a while it would. Yeah. Would you just change that one out or would you leave I'd, that? I'd I mean, change it anyway. I mean, I've got new ones, so yeah. we might as well put And then this could be a spare for an emergency. Yeah. But if you can bet you can't even feel where it's taking anything off. No, no, it's just polished. It's just polished it, off. it, yeah. Now remember, you don't push too far on these. Yeah. Because one of the two of the pistons are going to be close to him. So yeah. you just want to feel movement like that. Okay. All right. Yeah. That one's a bit stiff, so we just tap it off. Beautiful, they're not bent. Okay. So this is called a collet, and this sits on top of the valve, valve which is these springs here. And it was on number three, and it came off the inlet valve. And so that one had popped off, either because where the rod sits had popped out of their position in the rocker here, causing these to be loose and pop off pop off because the tappets were so loose yeah but thankfully this was just stuck in I'll show you. a little gap in the engine it was in here there it stayed there luckily but it's just weird that for an engine if that had come off and gone in there we would have taken the head off oh, the engine yeah, it would have been the right what it done it would have done more damage because obviously if that popped it would have gone down by the piston it wouldn't well it, the it would have gone by the cam there so okay. if it'd gone down by the uh, the push rod you see it rubbing and all sorts it would have oh it wouldn't have sound ter very terrific yeah good so noisy <laughs> After turning the engine over to ensure any water was out, and despite it seeming to be our lucky day, Zach couldn't help himself when I asked how it was going. What news do you want? Oh, is it bad? What news do you want? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. We're having such a good time. I know we were. Okay, just tell me. We're going to take the head off the engine. We do. What's wrong? With, what happened? What's wrong? No, nothing's wrong. It's fine. We pretty much touched it. Wait, what? Yeah, it's fine. Zach, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Are you kidding? No, seriously. No, it's actually it's actually alright. It's actually fine. Stuart's very relieved. We almost had to take the head off the engine. So he thinks it was a the water in it ultimately caused the um Rod to bend. Rod it didn't bend. None of the rods are bent. Oh. We're replacing the one with a little bit of wear in it anyway, just because of the can. Where it popped off. On the other side there's like a little cap, but it popped off because there wasn't any pressure holding it down. And Thankfully, it didn't fall down the oh, hole the where piston. the rods go or where it goes. So we didn't have to hook it out there or take off the oil sump or anything like that. It was in there hidden by a little pool of oil that we didn't see. It just looked like oil and Stuart went putting his finger around it and he was like, oh my God. It's like, it's fine. We've taken all the rods out, all straight and everything like that. It seems fine. So wait, it was the top, top of the rocker that was a little bit missing? It had come off. Yeah, that's what but my that, dad thought. But that wasn't that wasn't what it caused. So he thinks that the tappet's being a bit loose because the um, clearance was a little bit too great. Mm. And but ultimately the water like caused. There it was to water pop out. in the 
Have you got the water out of the combustion chamber now? We yeah, we, there wasn't really any in there. Oh, that's good. So so we don't think it's rusted or anything. Mm. So we're going to go to town in a bit and get some more of those copper yeah, washes these coming. and then we'll put it all back together. Yeah, thank And oil as well and then we can pretty much get it all done today we think. Really? Mm -hmm. He's very, he was almost cried. Oh my gosh. <laughs> can you believe that prank? He's in the pilot berth tonight. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, when you take out the fuel injectors, you're meant to replace the copper washers to ensure they have a good seal. So we headed to the local town to see what they had in stock. Oh. Perfect, perfect. I got glad I asked because we never found these in there. Yeah, that's awesome. Get eight. Then you got spares. I don't know, that's the one that came loose, but it's still straight. Did you tell Beck about one of the colour little things, yeah. little caps. Yeah, I told her that. yeah, he explained it. It's, it's actually really cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's damaged. Oh wow. Whoa. There was a bit of um force going there, wasn't there? There's the new one. Wow. Obviously they're the originals. It looks a bit, does it look longer? Or is no, it no, same? exactly the same. Yeah. Exactly the same. Wow. So that's ready to go back awesome. on. Awesome. And, oh wow, look at the colour difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Aww. so we're going to put them on. Because as I said to Zach earlier, I think the tappets were so, the back, the gaps were so big. Especially for the collet to come off because none of the rods were bent. Yeah. Only that one it was scored on the side, but we're going to put a new one on anyway. Yeah. And then I want to put it back on and then just see what gap there was. Yeah. So it gives us a guide how big the gap was. Yeah. And then we can set them up properly. The so, engine should be a lot quieter. So what caused it all? It was water going in, but there wasn't yeah, but much water. A, I think there's such a small amount. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and obviously we found another problem yeah. is uh, when we turn the engine over, yeah. the wire I took off for the heater plugs is mm -hmm. so corroded. Yeah. So we're going to clean up, but that's part of your starting circuit and your heater plug circuit oh. and your stop solenoid. Because when we disconnected, it wouldn't start, it wouldn't turn over. Oh. So we're going to clean all that connection off. Oh, you tried it on the key? Yes, oh. yeah. And you got loads of compression, it was blowing yeah. it off, wasn't it? Yeah. So I think that is the kind of straw that broke the camel's back yeah. or like dislodged yeah. it. Just this dislodge it, you know, that little bit of water, yeah. there wasn't much in there, yeah. but it was just enough and one cylinder just, just to, to set it off just to set it off okay, okay. but it's been a, a really good turnout yeah. and it's been really awesome to know exactly the ins and outs of the engine screw it down by hand and you'll feel it locate is that this one here yes now they're quite big threads so it might feel loose until the last minute and this is where you screw these in by hand first never use a spanner can you see that's located nice and it's screwed down and we're nearly yeah, at the Yeah, is that located nicely? Yeah, I can see that. Right, let's do the next one, number okay. three. Interesting to see where we are. So we've had a bit of carbon build up in the, on the glow plugs? Well, it's in the chamber itself. In the, in the, in the, in the combustion chamber, it's yeah. running rich and that's because the valves ain't been opening properly. Yeah, so we've got a bit of unburnt fuel which is basically not being burnt and is leaving black carbon residue on the inside of the combustion chamber here. That's why we have the point of when you try to start it sometimes, it, it wouldn't start probably sound like it was hydraulic in. Yeah. It's because the exhaust valve wasn't opening up to release the pressure. If you look here, those holes I showed you on mm -hmm. the injectors, that's where the spillback runs through. Oh, so we have to make sure they're clean. Yeah. Our um, valve clearance is way too big at the moment and we were going to be doing this valve clearance whilst we are in here but Sod's law is that it happened before we got in here. Look how much plays in them. Yeah. And this is the new one. See how it's torqued down now? Oh yeah. Now before, when it's on, uh, when it's on the other stroke, that cap has popped out because it's so loose. When we turn it over and set it, Oh, so the cap isn't actually attached to the top no, of the rocker? No, it just sits on top oh, of the okay, valve. Okay. Your engine is the same gap on the intake as well as the exhaust. Okay. Some of them are different on the way. Okay. So it's 0.25, which is that one. Oh, that's nice though, that they're the same. Yeah. It makes it yeah, easier. Oh, yeah, it makes it easier. When we got the boat, we knew we needed to do maintenance on the engine and just change filters and things like that. We weren't going to do the valve clearance because we hadn't hit 800 running hours. It was only on 400 when we got the boat. However, looking back, we should have just done it because it was a new boat to us. Um, and I guess it can come loose. 
Stuart? Yeah? So if it's every 800 hours, yeah. and we only got the boat at 400, it would have been done when the engine was brand new, and then not again. Yeah, but, when they, but when they actually when they do it, they just set it all up so it's gone, and then you need to do it eight hour, 800 hours then. But it was, we've only just hit 800 really. That, they were re they're really loose for, yeah. do they well, just loosen over? Them. Yeah, yeah did, the do they just yeah. loosen over time then? Oh yeah, yeah, they would actually buy a break. Okay. You put the screwdriver on the top, and then look how loose that is. So you tighten it like this until it starts just pinching it. There, look. So you want to push it in and then feel the resistance. Yeah. Do you want to feel that? And that? just as you're feeling it, that's good. Yeah. So can you feel that? Can yeah, it's feel? just pulling on it. Yeah, and that's what you want. It's okay. perfect. Sure, I'll tell you a funny story. When we were in the UK, Zach did an RYA diesel engine course. Oh yeah. Just a, it was a, a one, one day course, wasn't it Zach? Yeah. He came back and he says, okay, I understood everything, but um, the one thing that I didn't know about was the valve clearance. And I was like, what is the valve clearance? Valve. We tried, we valve. tried, and it was a, a guy with a thick Cornish accent giving the, <laughs> The class I and like, no, but everyone in the course because we talked after it's like, was he saying valve? And everyone's like, oh, that must be what it's called. Yeah, ev and so everyone, everyone came out of that course thinking valve, valve. <laughs> and then they all we all tried googling and it just kept coming up with valve. And I was like, what is this valve? And for ages we thought it was valve. <laughs> now look at you, Zach, doing the the valve clearance <laughs> all by yourself. <laughs> See how they work better? Yeah. So let's just check where those other valves are now. Those oh, that was are... that was it. Yeah. Oh, okay. they just, some of them just went down. We, some of the valves were touching. They were in. They were in, a, in, in its stroke. Zach, there's some some bits on the table. There's a lot of bits on the table. There's yeah. a lesson. There's a valuable lesson been learned here. <laughs> right. When we lay everything out, we take it off. We put it back in sequence. Don't uh -huh. assume anything. Is there anything else bloody missing? <laughs> see, see how he's checking now, look. <laughs> I love it. Is it just that then? <laughs> it is just that. Zach, come I on. I can't see anything else. Zach, so come on. <laughs> so that's fine, Zach. Yeah, good call, mate. <laughs> I thought he might have put something somewhere else and hidden there. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all hidden in plain sight, Zach. That's why he said, is there anything else? He's asking me. I said, well, have a look on the table. Mm -hmm. Did you mind putting these up? I'm sorry, mate. That's a bit cruel, that was, wasn't no, it? It's funny. Yeah. It is funny, and it's a good learning lesson, and you won't make that mistake again. We won't make yeah, that mistake that's, again. That's all it is. You've got to be... Especially when you're doing something like this. After doing the valve, <laughs> I mean valve clearance, not once, but twice, it was time to fill her up with oil and then hit the hay. I think we tuckered him out. This morning, the guys are doing the anti-siphon valve, which is what we took off in Shelter Bay. Well, a very... DIY version we took off in Shelter Bay. We're actually putting a proper Vetus one on today and it's Chris's birthday so we're going to try and get this done quickly this morning and then we're going to go enjoy her birthday um, maybe at a nice beach, bake her a cake. It's going to be a nice day but yeah Zach's just in the engine room now mounting it. That's cool. It comes with a sticker. Oh. Yeah. The maintenance on it. That's, that's cool isn't it? Yeah very cool. Good thinking Vetus. Yeah I wish more people did like that. Isn't it? We were going to use the old exhaust hose, but we had now earmarked this for a future diesel heater. So we Wait, bit so the bullet and chilled another hole in Tailey. Happy with that? Yeah. Yeah? I hate drilling holes in our boat, Zach. It never gets any better. Once that was installed, it was time to bleed the fuel through the system. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, it's starting. Yeah. So just tighten it down a little bit, number four, so you can just lock it off. Because just be careful, because it's just high pressure. It'll spray everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Woo! Woo! We're running on three cylinders. 
Was it a good spray, was it, mate? Yeah, it was coming out. Oh, cool. Jeez, it sounded yeah. nice, didn't it, on yeah. three? Ready? Yeah. Let me just make sure the check the water coming out, Becca. Yeah. Yeah, it is coming out, but not lot. I know. What was it? No, we haven't connected this bit. What? In the toilet. Oh shit. Uh. Oh, that's alright. <laughs> alright. It was in the shower anyway, so water's coming out there. <laughs> No, just connect this. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> I knew there was going to be something. I just realised, I went, oh shit. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, good. Yeah. Awesome. That's better, doesn't it? Oh, she's sounding awesome. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. because the, the valves are opening properly so the compression's better. <laughs> Sounds really sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Let's go and play. Yeah, we, need a, we need a drink after that one. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, Stuart. No, oh, you're welcome, mate. You're she welcome. sounded the best she's ever sounded. Yeah, she's yeah. Like, yeah, because the, the, the valves are opening properly now. So yeah. it's just working a lot better. It's just working loads It's better. just working how it should do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Funny that. Yeah. She was fixed and it was Chris's birthday. So it was time to let our hair down after a few anxious weeks. This morning we are up bright and early. We're all in the car. And we are heading to Ballet de Anton, which is a place I really wanted to go for a really long time. Um, it's about an hour and a half into the mountains and we've actually booked an Airbnb tonight. So I think we're going to do a day of waterfalls today, do some conservation bits tomorrow and then head back to the marina. But it's a nice, nice break from the marina. Stuart's birthday tomorrow, so, <laughs> so we'll make sure to celebrate that. We turn the AC off and just have opened the windows and it's lovely getting the mountain air. Yeah, it's yeah. really lovely. Yeah. It well, it'll hit you in the head. Is it deep? We've just got back to the car and we were joking that there's two types of people in life. There's those who pack sandwiches in a packed lunch and eat them all by 10am 
and there's those that are really good with self-control and eat them actually at lunchtime. Me and Stuart are the ones that at 10 o'clock we would eat our sandwiches and have nothing for lunch. Zach and Chris are the other ones so I feel like it's always one person and a couple. Let us know down below which one you are uh, because I am definitely one to eat my sandwiches early. whole time we're in that waterfall I was just thinking of those sandwiches. Probably picnic. What is it Zach? Honey. Honey? We have found a really cute little local market so we had to pull over and visit but there's so many nice fruits and veg plants and then just behind me there's actually some wicker basket and if you know me I love a good wicker, wicker basket that's a good one what have you guys found oh I don't know what they are oh mystery hmm. I, I they're gonna be really good or really bad I wonder what these are it's just like, like caramel sort of yeah, oh my god caramel. this is this looks like, I don't know, I can't read that. Oh, like Dolce de Leche, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that's what we would need. Oh, is this coconut? Yeah, that's coconut, babe. Oh. oh we'll have one of them as well. Okay, wow. Well. Money plant. That looks like a Madagascan palm, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks like they've dug all these out in the rainforest in somewhere, which I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> But. Oh, they've got air plants. Oh, I like air plants. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Good job, Zach. Now we're looking up, look. <sighs> like a rocket, we're going to take off. I mean, what are we going to do if we don't go this way? We don't. We miss the Airbnb. Oh, come on. There we go. We're right. We're right. We're right. <laughs> come on. What will we're in for you. I can't see the road. Come on, you right, mate. Keep going. Oh my God. No. Uh, there's nothing there. Not yet. It's saying that. Let me have a look. What's yeah. the verdict? Yeah, I can't. It's saying that. We got Not a there, chance. <laughs> Yeah, it's not going that way, mate. So you'll have to be first. Can you see the drive behind you, Zach? In hindsight, I should have looked at the roads before we did so. Yes. yes we should. I know, I think it's part of the adventure yeah, I do. It is. It is when you're going up right roads like this, you know, you... Mm -hmm. no? It's always these bits you remember, isn't it? This is where things got really interesting. Our Airbnb was in a gated park, which was great, until this happened. Private. Private. Ah, no, no, I'm Ah. Oh. Didn't. Oh. Private. I guess we're going back to the marina, aren't we? Oh. Flipping heck, that's so far. There's no other way around, is there? So, because we weren't allowed through this gate, we had to drive back down the dodgy road, all the way back to Valle de Anton, back past the marina, and up the other way only to get to an identical gate. Oh, Zach Seward, Zachary oh. Seward. Fontanella. Yeah. yeah, Fontanella. Fontanella. Yeah, okay. okay. Gracias. We'll give it a go. Oh my God, we could have just done that. So do you, maybe not, I don't know. We'll just gracias. No, it's exactly the same. It is exactly the same. Surely not. Can you look at that map now? No, it is, Zach. Uh, this is the other entrance to the park. And that was the unsafe way, he said. Really said this is the safe way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So we that yeah, but we did sew him the dress, did we? <laughs> my name was on that list though. Yeah, yeah, so if you would have showed him your name. Oh, oh this is beautiful. Ah. I love it. I really do. Oh well, well, we've had a good scenic tour, haven't we, all the way round? And this is amazing. <laughs> oh. 
half a million. No way. Surely that's not the other end of it. It was exactly the same sign, Zach. Yeah. Wow, wasn't it on the other is, end? This is amazing, though. Um, like, detour aside, this is really cool. <laughs> as annoying as it was, it was worth it for this view. So it's Stuart's birthday tomorrow. Yeah, what are we Stuart. eating? <laughs> McTan super wedges. Not just one pack, two packs. Some barbecue sauce and some savoury wedges and, wait for it, an all day bre breakfast galette de pomme de terre. Are there any? I think there's any. Perfect. <laughs> Show me what you've done. <laughs> I guess the Airbnb didn't come with any pans. That's hilarious. Well, there's a will, there's a way. Or a lighter for the oven. No, how, oh, you had to light it with paper. Oh, cheers, everybody. Yeah, cheers. 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 Thank you. Cheers. This is what we need. Okay, this is perfect. Good. Perfect. Can't go wrong with that, can you? Good grub. Wow, well, pretty cool view for coffee. Ah, thanks for the coffee. Last night was not a good night's sleep. It was weighing it down all night. It's a different sound from a boat being just in a house, let alone a house with a tin roof. Um, so yeah, it was a, a loud night. <laughs> Happy birthday, Stuart! Thank you! <laughs> As we didn't sleep too wonderfully last night, we're gonna shake out the tiredness and go for a morning dip in the waterfall. When there's a waterfall 13 minutes walk, you can't help but go and dip in it first thing, so. Very excited about that. And look at the pine trees. <laughs> Those who have followed us for a while know that I love pine trees. And it's a small sacrifice I made to go on the boat, leaving the pine trees behind. Oh, I love them. They just fill me with serotonin. Give it a lick. That's yeah. definitely a pretty poisonous one though. Look at it, yeah. the colors on that. Look at this place. Look at this natural swimming pool on the doorstep of where we're staying. Honestly, if you lived here, you'd, you'd be here every morning. I bet there's so many hikes around here as well. It's amazing. Take me on a spree. I want to get to know me. Every little inch of Gentle while you stroke, when you did picture me, every number count, love tokens. Where did all the swallows fly when I was 17? Caught up in a dream. became a nightmare 
This is ace, guys. This is lovely. A good I'm going to try you. some of this local honey. I'm going to have a bit of ice cream, then I'm going to have a bit of honey. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a breakfast for champs. It is your birthday. <laughs> Love it. Tell me what that red and black snake we just saw on the walk is. The local names is corals. Of the 2,300 cases of snake bites in Panama each year, only two to four uh, percent correspond to that snake. And what happens when you, obviously it's a neurotoxin, snake so you're you're crazy. Unlike pit vipers, which I'm guessing they're commonly related, which they are related to, there is little to no pain, swelling or symptoms may not appear for hours, but once symptoms do appear, they progress rapidly to euphoria, drowsiness, nausea, vomiting, headaches, and difficulty breathing, and then paralysis. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Approximately four to five milligrams, which is like no nothing, um, is a lethal dose for humans. And a larger, <laughs> a larger coral snake can deliver twenty milligrams, Ooh. so four times the lethal dose. Wow! They're all through the Americas. This is from Tampa, Florida. Beautiful. This neighborhood is insane. Look how different everything is. And everyone's got their own space. I'm not about house life, but this house life would be. Be all right. Good house life. Good house life. Super peaceful everywhere. What's there's, that? There's oh. a castle on the top. There is a castle on the top. Oh. Oh. Wow. Okay, now that's rich and famous. How high is it? Three thousand. What's that? Three thousand six hundred in meters. It's like one thousand meters. Let's do meters. Is one thousand and ninety-five point. We're on a mountain, guys. Yeah. Higher than Penny Fan right now. Wow. This is the gate that we got to yesterday and the guy wouldn't let us in because he didn't think we were staying here, but... From the other side. <gasps> now we're leaving through it. Now we've made it. We made it through the gate! Yeah! Woo! This is where we came and we couldn't go. That's hilarious. Around. Oh, brilliant. The final stop was the amphibian centre, where we spent the next few hours learning about the local wildlife. Thanks for your dip. This is very alpine, look at this. Oh. Hola. Buenas. I got what? Frog prints. Found on the trail. Yeah, the golden frog. Oh. Yeah, it's endemic to Panama and national symbol. Oh, that's Panama's national symbol. There is six frogs. Six. <laughs> it's no longer found in nature due to fungus, which has killed many amphibians around the world. Different color, uh, but the same species. Wow. You wouldn't, you wouldn't see him, would you, boy? You wouldn't know if you were out and about. Oh, he's there! Oh, he's there! Good birthday so far, Stuart. Brilliant. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. We've got some frogs, ice cream, pizza. Yeah, that crust is amazing. Yeah. What a week. Just want to throw out the biggest thank you to these two legends. It's not every day you'll get a phone call from friends over 5,000 miles away, willing to drop everything to help you fix an engine. Saved our day. Don't worry. I can't tell you how lovely it was when you said. Thank you for looking after us. Honestly, see you guys soon. Take care.